Hi, my name's Rebecca Machine and today I'm talking to you about listening to God's voice when he corrects us. I think when most of us hear the word correction, we probably have a negative response. The idea is that we're in the wrong or that we've made a mistake and that needs to be put right. In the US, you get sent to a correction centre if you committed a crime or in school, you're made to correct the questions you did wrong. Naturally, most of us don't like to admit that we're wrong. We're proud, we don't like losing face. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge, but they preferred to play the blame game than admit that they'd messed up. Most days, as a head of year in a large secondary school, I meet students who continue to lie, rather than just putting their hands up, admitting that they've done wrong. I always tell them from the first day that I'd prefer them to just come to me, tell me the truth, because we all make mistakes, but when we deceive ourselves and each other, trust is broken. But what if we were to look at correction differently? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as the act of making something accurate or better. I don't know about you, but I always want to find ways to improve. That doesn't mean that what I'm doing now is even wrong. It's just about doing things better. The Bible says that anyone who listens to God's word and doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at it goes away and forgets what he looks like. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk out with a big smudge on my face. Correction isn't bad, but it can be our response to the correction that is. I had a situation recently where I had to correct my two boys, just for a change. They were at the top of a cove in Yorkshire, and there was a sheer drop. We've been there many times before, but this time we took friends. I'd considered telling them to wait at the top for me, but thought they'd know to do it because they do that every time. However, in the excitement, they ran off. And we had that heart sinking moment where we didn't know where they were. I had to tell them off, which resulted in several drops and grunts. But my correction was right. I was worried about their safety. I didn't want them to take a wrong fall or stumble, resulting in a serious injury. It's because I love them that I had to point out the mistake. So does our Heavenly Father. They were also with someone who was new to the area. And whilst they may have known what to do, there was no guarantee The friend was not going to fall because he wasn't used to the terrain. As Christians, we need to set an example to others by our obedience to God's voice. Ultimately, there was a tension with my boys, but I hope that next time they'll remember to wait. Because when we obey God's voice, it draws us closer to him and it actually brings freedom. The longer I teach students, the easier it becomes because they know my standards, they know what I will and will will not tolerate. And the lessons where they follow what I ask are actually the ones we have the most fun and we have the best relationship. So this week, let's allow ourselves to open our heart to God's voice and where he's calling us to do even better.